Coming to you from the couch that K-pop stands bought hundreds of Trump rally tickets online from, I'm RJ Balde, and this is the Tricomes Hash It Out podcast. On this show, we feature conversations about trending cannabis topics. We also bring in industry insiders and influencers to discuss their point of view. In this episode, I'll be talking to Brian Chaplin about the cannabis-derived product he worked to formulate in effort to battle the opioid epidemic in the United States after experiences with prescription drug and opioid addiction. We'll also talk about his philosophy for conscious capitalism, navigating through what he calls the age of anxiety, and much more. Without further ado, let's hash it out. Today, I am joined by Brian Chaplin, founder and chief brand officer of Medicine Box, a brand that seeks to preserve and build upon the heritage of 70s era growers in Nevada County, California, with innovative 100% locally grown and manufactured wellness products. Brian, welcome to the show, man. Hey, RJ. Great to be here, man. Thank you. Where are you joining us virtually from? (laughs) Virtually, I am staring at uh south lake tahoe from north lake tahoe so i live in north lake tahoe right at the state line in crystal bay very grateful to be here it's a beautiful day Mm. there's a nice breeze off the lake the quaking aspen tree outside my house is dancing for me Mm. and uh yeah just great to be here in tahoe let's dive into talking about medicine box here so certainly I understand that you formulated Medicine Box's tinctures um, to help a friend recover from prescription drug addiction. So can you tell me a little bit more about the the genesis behind what started Medicine Box? Yeah, well, just to clarify a little bit there, um, I started doing the early formulations with mm-hmm. a variety of herbalists, and then it you know transcended into... Um, getting into a, a scientist's uh, hand who is on our staff, Dr. Raphael. Uh, mm-hmm. We call him the GLAD scientist. Um, and the formulations that we were using, they weren't for a friend, they were for myself. Uh, I was the one that was, you know, I'm in recovery from drugs and alcohol, uh, mm-hmm. in recovery uh, about a year and a half in. You know, I was still experiencing a lot of those high highs and low lows, and, you know, definitely did not have the homeostasis and equanimity that I, you know, strive to achieve now every day. And my physician prescribed me a low dose, 10 milligrams of Prozac, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and SSRI. And that's usually described prescribed for anxiety and depression. And Mm -hmm. I didn't want, a part of me did not want to be on that. Uh, but the other part of me didn't know any other way. And I just, you know, I was a victim of the societal programming of instant gratification, right? Take Mm, this, it'll go away, you know, take that and this will go away. So, um, but I do like to say, uh, I'm extremely grateful for Pfizer who made Prozac because, um, and, and for my journey through, you know, a, a addiction and having a chaotic relationship with drugs and alcohol for mm-hmm. 18 years of my life, because that was really what the, the, the embryonic spark that got me to start conceptualizing what is now medicine box and looking through the seven pillars of the medicinal spiritual tools that I use every day, uh, some mm-hmm. more than others. And that's mindfulness, nature, food, uh, you just heard me talking about my food that I made for myself, uh, yeah, music, <laughs> community, collaboration and recovery, and then cannabis and, you know, the larger scope of plant medicine is this evolving medium that really just weaves all of those uh, healing modalities that we call the seven pillars of medicine box. So that all started to happen, um, you know, uh, early 2016 coming out of a a massive cultivation year for my myself uh, when I was growing uh, cannabis in the uh, the Prop 215 era with mm-hmm. the collective, and uh, wasn't feeling satiated for you know growing another you know crop of of marijuana and you know really kind to have to dodge people of what I did you know mm-hmm. certainly wasn't able to be on podcasts and preach 
you know, to the masses of, uh, of what I did. And I really wanted to bring something to the, to the masses that really resonated with, uh, myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, it had vision, it had intention, um, a mission with deep values and ingrained in that and, and bring that out to uh, the rest of the world. I did not know uh, how I was going to do it, but I knew uh, that's what I wanted to do. And I had that calling early 2016. So the last four years has really been, uh, you know, the proverbial 5,000 piece puzzle that you just dump <laughs> on your uh, coffee table and say, get this done. And it's yeah. all one, one shade of color. Uh, you know, and then the shades of colors start to, to change <laughs> over mm. time, <laughs> we, yeah. you know, and you're just like, whoa, okay. So that's kind of where we're at, um, now about, you know, f f four years later, we launched, uh, we went to the NCIA conference, National Cannabis Industry Association mm. in Oakland mm -hmm. in 2016 on a whim. I put a team together. We made some products. Um, I got a glossy flyer in my mailbox saying, if you sign up now, we'll give you 40% off like the last like 10 booths or something. And okay. we just went for it. Um, and it's been quite the, you know, journey since, and it's been, uh, absolutely glorifying and, uh, wouldn't have changed anything, um, you know, since, because it's really sharpened me as a person, me as a leader, uh, mm -hmm. and me and, and my own recovery process, which is a big part of what this conversation is all about. Well, first and foremost, man, congratulations on the sobriety. You said a year and a half now you're going on a year and a half. No, I, I was a year and a half, uh, when I was prescribed Prozac, Okay, like, in, uh, oh no, three years in. So 2012, September 9th of 2012, Oh wow. uh, is my sobriety sobriety day. So I'm coming up on eight years, nice, but man. I do like to say that, yeah, I mean, I do like to say I graduated high school in four years mm -hmm. and then I went to college and graduated college in four years. Um, and after high school, I didn't know a damn thing. And after college, I didn't know a damn thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm coming up on eight years. Like I still don't really know a damn thing mm -hmm. about, you know, sobriety and recovery. I know a little bit and that's why I continue to do it one day at a time. Yeah. Now, how, far you made that uh that jigsaw puzzle analogy how far into the jigsaw puzzle do you think you are now i'd say we're you know we're approaching halfway because there's a lot of momentum yeah um behind the brand we started you know the first two years was really kind of like you know if you think of a ball of yarn another analogy is like untangling that ball of yarn which mm -hmm. is the uh you know, the regulations and the compliance and mm -hmm. ordinances and prohibition and the stigmas behind cannabis and messaging. And how do you market this? How do you get banking? Hmm. You know, sure. 280E tax laws, like how, how do you do all this? So yeah. the first couple of years was just, you know, untangling still, you know, I ran track in high school. I think of like the four by four relay when you know, I would get past the baton from the second leg and then have to pass the baton to the, uh, the, the final leg of the race sure. and you're kind of, you're, you're, you're not in between these things. You know, I was in between the prop 215 market in between, you know, prop 64, mm -hmm. 2018 and being like, what's going to happen here. And then, you know, the whole uh, stacking of licenses that happened and the big lobbyists that went into, you know, Sacramento, we'll save that conversation for another time, but a lot has changed. Sure. And I feel like we have, you know, that ball of yarn a bit, you know, untangled where it's, it can actually roll, you know, yeah. pretty fluidly. And, um, you know, during quarantine, I'll fast forward a little bit, you know, from, I call prop 64, the THC marketplace. And it's very limiting because every license holder is depending on every other license holder to get anything done. Mm. And then you are as a brand, you know, we're so far removed uh, from the customer where we have to depend on licensed distributors to a licensed retailer and then, you know, brand ambassadors that might not be 100%, you know, uh, a missionary in your brand mm -hmm. to translate your message to a bud tender who is getting paid on the side uh, to, you know, sell 
certain products or the buyer of that dispensary uh, is getting pay, paid by other, you know, uh, big box brands to pay for shelf space. And then you have to depend on all of that to sell your product to a customer mm. if you can get them through the door. Mm. Most people, I don't even like going to the grocery store, never mind driving to go to a dispensary mm -hmm. to buy a cannabis product. So there's a major disconnect. So the more we started to explore the exotic cannabinoids of the plant, CB, CBD, CBG, CBN, mm -hmm. CBC, um, is things started to become a bit more compelling. Now, if you remember in 2018, 19, it was all about CBD and it was isolate, CBD isolate, mm -hmm. put it in a bottle, call it a tincture, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, snake oil, mm -hmm. right? Let's take advantage of, you know, consumers that aren't quite discerning yet and that no chance in hell was I going to align my brand with CBD isolate. But I started to research more of the minor cannabinoids, mm -hmm. looking at what they do, digging, digging, digging into you know, the, the limited amount of research that I could find on them. And during quarantine, uh, we started to develop two new, uh, two new products. And then we did a while you're at it product, uh, to, to help with immunity, to help with, you know, overall vitality with the state of affairs that we're in. And we developed three brand new products that don't have any THC in it. Uh, those um, are all made now at the manufacturer, and we set up a direct-to-consumer e-commerce model so we can start, you know, selling online mm -hmm. and marketing to 300 million people in the United States, wow. uh, and not have to quite depend on everyone else to get your brand out there in a very, very overregulated marketplace that is called. Prop 64. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, that big piece of the puzzle is, is huge. That was like, you know, when you had a good push, you know, uh, putting the puzzle together, we put about a quarter of it together in, in three months time. Wow. You know, and yeah, we, and the, the manufacturer, we worked really fast. Uh, we, we all had time and, you know, heads were down sure. and we were just, we were grinding and, um, you know, uh, uh, the manufacturer we used in, in Colorado, uh, <laughs> when I called her back 30 days later, I said, we have our products ready to go. And she's like, really? <laughs> Normally when people first reach out to me, I don't hear back from them for 18 months because they're figuring things out. However, we didn't have to start from scratch with all the, the, the messaging and the, right. the, the, the pillars and the vision and our mission. And we had, we had a lot of those systems in place and now we've just been really tightening up the levers mm. on all those systems. And, you know, we're virtual, everyone is virtual. So, you know, Asana, the project management tool, Slack, mm -hmm. eClincher, all these, uh, you know, SaaS programs that are just amazing sure. uh, when you start to really leverage them for your team. So that's been a big part of my job as the, the founder, or, you know, you call me chief brand officer. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, you just jump in wherever you have to and thrive in the boring. You know, that's what I've been up to thriving in the boring. What's that mean? It's like doing the things that are kind of boring yeah. and stuff that, you know, I don't, you know, I want to be doing this every single day, talk, doing podcasts and being the, the, the chief brand officer and the, the ultimate steward of my brand. However, uh, when I'm bootstrapping a venture uh, called Medicine Box, you know, you really have to just jump in um, wherever is needed. And it's been very gratifying because I have uh, really kicked myself in the ass and say, thrive in the boring. You know, you don't want to set up these communications and systems and SOPs, but if you want to have a healthy, thriving virtual business, that's what you absolutely 1000% mm. have to do. And today, you know, I'm, I'm really excited because the, all systems are firing. The team is working really hard and I have a great, great group of people that are, are behind this brand and they're in it to, uh, not only win it, but to, 
uh, bring, you know, healing and holistic plant-based therapeutics uh, to the rest of, of the world and hopefully make a dent on the mental health epidemic. Sure. And that is ever increasing from COVID-19 and mm -hmm. the protests and the riots that we're under and this age, age of anxiety mm -hmm. that we live in, um, not only getting them the medicine that they need and the people that don't even know they need it, but really uh, a lifestyle that's really kind of encompasses those products that are, are grounded in those seven pillars that I, I mentioned. And I, I think we overcomplicate things as humans that when we, when we heal, we need all this stuff. We need to go to ayahuasca in the jungles of Peru and we need to go to a therapist five days a week. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is great, but there's just some other very simple, simple tactics that we can use mm -hmm. if we look towards nature for our answers. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it is certainly interesting how humans tend to overcomplicate things and um, search for these sort of elaborate uh, elixirs and remedies where when there are things, like you said, that are very simple that you can do, uh, that you can practice within yourself, like wherever you are without the help of um, and like mindfulness meditations or a yoga practice or yeah. um, something Dude. like that, you know, now. Speak, speak in my language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also love the the idea of thriving in the boring because you certainly have to experience the boring in order to know what fulfillment feels like. Sort of like you need to experience the darkness in order to know what the light feels like, or the you need yeah, to experience yeah, the cold to know what warmth feels like. You know. Well, you also need to be able to walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. Sure. And that's a big one. It's like, how am I going to, you know, from a business perspective, how am I going to delegate to you, RJ, mm -hmm. if I don't even know the job to delegate? Or, you know, um, how am I going to be able to share my experience, strength, and hope with someone else if I haven't wallowed through the mires of muck and crap and darkness mm -hmm. and then came out into the light? You know, exactly. uh, I don't think there's a, a hierarchy of a healer to a, uh, the person being healed. It's like an even playing field and we're, you know, Ram, like Ram Dass said, we're all just walking each other home. Yeah. And it's like, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know everything about Asana. I know enough to be dangerous. However, there's someone else that's really good at it, mm -hmm. but I can ac actually delegate that stuff. Now I can delegate to people how to do, or may, that's not the right word, but for conversation's sake, delegate to someone how to meditate. It's okay right. that you have thoughts. Thoughts come, thoughts go. Don't attach to them. Right. The point of meditation is to not let our thoughts rule us with the reconstruction of our past and all these crazy ref new formulations of the future. Mm -hmm. It's about practicing being in the present moment and observing the things that are coming through you. So how am I able to talk that if I haven't done it myself? So yes, thriving in the boring to come out onto the other side uh, is something that's been um, extremely a big priority uh, in my life. Once I'm like, dude, you're thriving in the boring right now. <laughs> like I said it out loud, like this is nuts, you know, like <laughs> spreadsheets and like, you know, uh, Slack channels yeah, and yeah. virtual assist, all this stuff. I'm like, I want to be reading and learning and educating and, sure. you know, going outside, but it's, it's, it's extremely gratifying when you get to that place. Totally. Now, what's the name of the, the e-commerce line that you mentioned launched during quarantine? Yeah. Is that vital? So recovery? we have, yeah. Okay. So we, the, the, um, ongoing website, which we call the mothership, one of our team members, Justin, mm -hmm. came up with that. He's our digital content creator, and mm -hmm. uh, him and I collaborate on a, a lot of the creative content that you see all over that website, mm -hmm. and that gets repurposed into, you know, other um, bite-sized pieces of content. But the uh, medicinebox.green is where you'll find all our content, uh, the THC product, which is. Uh, equanimity mm -hmm. and that has uh, other seven other synergistic herbs and botanicals in there 
that got second place at the Emerald Cup in 2019. And then we uh, we formalized a new um, uh, website, medicineboxwellness.com. Uh, that's in the staging site right now. We're working some kinks out. Uh, but the three products that we are releasing on that for direct-to-consumer ships to your door within three to five uh, business days, uh, just beautiful thing there. That's a you know, quarter size of the puzzle right there. Yeah. But uh, the equanimity product, uh, we removed the THC out of it and we kept the same herbs, the central nervous system, soothing herbs, chamomile, valerian, skullcap, uh, catnip, lemon balm licorice, mm. hawthorn berry, uh, B6, and uh, essential amino acid tryptophan that we derive from another plant source. Uh, and that helps convert your serotonin when you sleep. Uh, so we removed the THC and we added CBN, which is just oxidized THC for anyone mm. in the audience. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people um, know what CBN is by now, but some studies, Steep Hill Labs did a, a great study and uh, two and a half to five milligrams of CBN uh, is equivalent to five to 10 milligrams of diazepam, which is your, oh, wow. your benzodiazepines like Xanax sure. and Ativan and things like that. So yep. uh, coupled with skullcap, which helps with frayed nerves and cravings um, and some valerian, which is just the natural version of Valium, you have a really potent um, sleep aid and a really potent, uh, formulation that is in the form of a sublingual tincture that really helps with relaxation, uh, a calm demeanor and things like that. And a lot of us are central, you know, most of us, our central nervous systems right now are absolutely flared from everything that's going on. And there's so much uncertainty that, uh, you know, I, I believe this product will, will bring some equanimity to people's lives. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's why it's properly named that to keep cool, calm and collective in, in times of uncertainty. Uh, the second one is for gut health. Uh, it's called happy belly. Uh, that's formulated with CBD, uh, CBG and CBC and, and CBG and CBC in combination have shown some great promise in mitigating gastrointestinal cancers, uh, CBG itself. Uh, there's some great studies that show it helps with uh, IBS and Crohn's disease, but uh, medical d disclaimer, none of these statements have been uh, evaluated by the FDA. So, um, you know, we add other beneficial gut soothing and, and gut biome enhancing herbs, uh, fennel, grapeseed, uh, saffron, we put some omega threes in there, some citric acid, and then the carrier oil is a combination of uh, hemp seed, olive, and fractionated coconut oil. And we also added some uh, reishi mushroom and some chaga mushroom in there. Oh, wow. And that that's a great uh, formulation mm -hmm. tincture to take pre and post meal, or just as needed for a happier belly. So I like to take it with a you know, moderate Mediterranean diet that I'm on. I just explain again, I explained to you the food I was eating, a piece of ahi mm -hmm. with some greens and some oyster head mushrooms and, and some beautiful cherries. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, yeah, it helps with the absorption of nutrients and, and the breakdown of, of food in the, in the gut biome. And super excited about that. Uh, a lot of our uh, female friends and associates say it really helps them uh, when they're in their uh, moon cycle. Mm -hmm. And then the third product is called Vital Recovery. And uh, as you know, recovery is a, a big piece of uh, the Medicine Box vision as well as my personal journey. Mm -hmm. And I always say we're always recovering from something. Like everyone is recovering from something. I just happen to be recovering from drugs and alcohol. But mm -hmm. Now the masses are recovering from this COVID-19 stressor. You know, sure. people have died. I know people that parents have, have passed away, people that have had it, uh, people that have had to move out of LA to the East Coast, buy vans, 
you know, mm-hmm. and, and start traveling because that's, they're recovering from this. <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. you know, a lot of other people are recovering from either bad relationships or bad business partnerships or the new New York city hustle or the corporate atmosphere. So uh, that's really, this product is an ode to uh, folks that are, you know, everyone that is in recovery from something. And mm-hmm. we we're blending that with, uh, CBD, uh, CBG and CBN, CBN kind of balances out the very mood elevating medicinal mushrooms in there, shiitake, mataki, reishi, and chaga. We also put ginger, turmeric, and tabulia, mm. coconut oil, olive oil, and um, some omega-3s in there and some licorice to just really kind of – licorice mm. and saffron to really just round out the, the flavor profile. And it's, highly, it's really concentrated at 1,100 milligrams of cannabinoid content. Mm. And that's a beautiful tincture to take, you know, midday – uh, for a midday pick me up and just, uh, you know, recover some of that, you know, lost, uh, clear focused energy that you just kind of rapidly consume in the early morning hours into the mid afternoon. So those are the, the, the suite of products that we call, uh, one cab or your first cabinet of your medicine box. Mm-hmm. And we're beyond excited to, to bring that to everyone. And we did a soft launch on the solstice and just to kind of, you know, uh, snuck it in under the radar. No one really saw hmm. it, and we did that on we did that on purpose to work out the kinks. Uh, we're in the lab right now, just ironing out uh, you know some of the shopping cart thing uh, kinks, and uh, the manufacturer should be you know getting everything uh, boxed up for us to send off to the drop shipper. And we're gonna wait until after uh, the Fourth of July weekend because we want everyone to go have fun and enjoy themselves and have fun with their family and friends from, Mm -hmm. you know, a social distance away and bring your mask and be ready in July for the first cabinet medicineboxwellness.com. Nice, Nice, man. How are, so I, I imagine you're pretty stoked leading up to, you had a sort of like a soft launch is what you're describing. And then, um, (laughs) You have a more uh, like a, a larger launch scheduled for uh, after the Fourth of July. So, best of luck, man. I'm excited to see how yeah. that goes. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. And if you uh, sign up, you can sign up on our newsletter, medicinebox.green, and mm-hmm. get on that site. We're offering all our loyal uh, fans and, and followers that have really been with us for the you know the last few years watching this this little brand this little brand that could small, but mighty um, we're offering everyone 20% off that's on that site, 20% off for their first purchase. And then 30% uh, if they sign up for an auto subscribe, which I highly sure. recommend because it's, it's like, you know, who doesn't like something showing up in their mailbox every 30 days when they don't have to think about it. So yeah, man, I uh, love my yeah. subscription services. So me I'm too. It's, it's, <laughs> They're a, be- so convenient, it's a beautiful man. thing. I know. So convenient. Right? Yeah. It's it's like when I met Ashley and, uh, well, Tricombs sure. uh, was through LinkedIn, you know, yeah. putting my calendar link, um, <laughs> you know, at a message. It's like I screen a lot of people, but it's like, hey, yeah. let's talk. You know, here's my calendar link. I don't have to think about it. Drop in at your leisure. Right? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, cool. I have a conversation with with <laughs> Ashley coming up because my Google calendar is telling me that oh game changer like Man. never th- never thought a kid with massive ADHD would ever do something like that but it's actually mitigated a lot of my ADHD oh for sure man yeah what they so, can't do these days huh streamlining yeah. everything streamlining the life yeah now I want to talk about this aspect too, because we mentioned how the beginning of Medicine Box came from your own personal experiences with um, drug abuse and addiction. Um, And uh, you mentioned how the company itself is doing, has sort of a business philosophy geared toward providing alternatives for those who may be struggling with that sort of addiction. Now, 
the CDC estimates that approximately 128 people die from opioid overdoses every day in the United States. Um, the CDC has also outlined the opioid epidemic has been happening in waves with the first wave happening in the 1990s and the most recent beginning in 2013. So can you tell me how that plays into what you call um, conscious capitalism and that business philosophy? Yeah, well, thanks for bringing up those data points because I meant to check on that. Last I checked, it was 117 mm. per day. So 100 and you said 128? Yep. So real quick. Yeah, this is a big question and I really want to nail it uh, the best I can. Um, you know, looking at the the nature of of addiction. Okay. So the, the bottle or the drink or the drug, mm. the Oxycontin becomes the ally for the person. Usually it starts with an injury, uh, or, a over prescribed, you know, uh, prescription that, that ally becomes the crutch for the person. The crutch becomes the habit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, or the dependency, the habit, becomes the behavior. The behavior turns into this thing called guilt. Guilt becomes shame. Shame becomes sadness. Sadness becomes depression. Okay. The depression turns into fear, which the acronym false evidence appearing real. And that fear of insecurities or I'm not good enough or I'm never going to be able to get out of this dependency. Uh, all those low vibrational feelings that humans go through, but addicts really go through even more so because it's so hard to get out of this cycle mm -hmm. of addiction. And then the fear is temporarily absolved by the bottle <laughs> or the drug. And then that becomes the ally and then the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult for addicts to get out of that cycle because of what I just explained. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking in as a non-addict, you, you can't really explain it to someone that's never been in that cycle. But the people that have, um, you know, it's like you speak the same language. So uh, that right there um, has over taken most of our country. I'm from the East Coast. My sister works in hospitals in the Boston area, and she's right in the thick of this opioid epidemic. Mm. Um, and now with COVID-19, I think I've read some figures, you know, there's the substance abuse has gone up, you know, 28%. There's domestic abuse. There's, uh, you know, a lot of people in recovery relapsing. I don't know anyone firsthand, but really, you know, medicine box, I think you, you asked like, how are we applying some conscious capitalism mm -hmm. kind of towards this? It's, it's, it's really bringing awareness to the fact that, you know, there's a massive problem in our country and it's called addiction. And there are people dying and our, rec our recovery, our rehab systems, our um, approach to, uh, addiction is completely outdated and it's all about let's give them more drugs hmm. <laughs> to, to get over their addiction let's give here's a pill for your pill right yeah yeah let's give the her let's give the heroin addict methadone or suboxone that mm -hmm. has worked it saved it's it saves millions of lives but most of those people get dependent on that let's give the person uh, who you know has um, you know, anxiety and depression as Xanax, and then they're having symptoms from that, you know, prescription. So let's give them more pills and everyone's just hopped up on pills. Getting off them is complete insanity because they rewire your system. So there's another approach, plant medicine. There's another approach being mindful. There's an, there's a whole other approach to this. And I'll take a, you know, my firsthand experience with 
Prozac that I like to, uh, to talk about in a very, on a very, in a basic way to understand it is Prozac goes in our system as a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And a lot of, a lot of these drugs work this way. They hit the, they hit receptors in, in your brain, uh, opiates hit those opiate receptors, et cetera. And our receptors become dependent on them because that is all that our brain is developing. So with Prozac, if I have three lonely molecules of serotonin in my brain, the Prozac is targeting those serotonin molecules that are between my synapses, my pre and post synaptic uh, valves. So the serotonin hangs out in there. And what Prozac does is it blocks the serotonin from being transferred from pre to post. Okay. It's not contributing to building any more serotonin. So that's the key. So Prozac now it's not building more serotonin. So the human that's taking it is getting dependent on the serotonin because they only have three molecules of it hmm. and it's surging those three molecules. So if you think of a uh, jumper cables, jumping your, your car battery, hmm. you do it over and over again every single day. Why don't you just go to the hardware store and buy yourself a new spark plug? <laughs> right. That seems, that seems pretty simple, right? right. So that's how Prozac right. works. So I think of the new spark plug as uh, plant medicine. And plant medicine is doesn't have to be. I think a lot of people here at plant medicine they associate it with ayahuasca, ibogaine, uh, peyote, some of the larger the the the, the big ones. Mm -hmm. Plant medicine can be a cup of tea. It could be staring at a tree. Uh, in this case, cannabis and hemp-based wellness products that really help create more serotonin in the brain or blockade opiate receptors so those opiates don't get in there right so you know cbd combined with beta carophylline terpene works really well at blocking opiate receptors uh mm -hmm. cannabis that has thc in it is a very similar molecule to uh, the uh, the bliss molecule and mm -hmm. that acts as a you know, the key and lock mechanism where THC that's present in a whole plant formulation is really there to unlock the CB1 receptor. So all the other plant allies are the intrinsic powers of plants. It's not the, it's not the actual plant. It's the compounds that are in the plant to work mm -hmm. in our endocannabinoid system and bring homeostasis to the body. So when I think of plant medicine, it's very simplistic to me. I don't really, I may have overcomplicated, but I don't think it needs to be overcomplicated. Like humans overcomplicate things already. So let's not overcomplicate anything else. Mm -hmm. If you are building relationships with plant medicine, you know, whether it's herbs or cannabis or, or hemp, mm -hmm. your body is really going to adapt to that or adapt you've heard of adaptogens your your body just starts to adapt to what you're putting mm -hmm. into it so as you're putting let's just say adaptogens as you're putting these adaptogens into your body right your your biological spiritual emotional and mental system is adapting to all that while you're transitioning off of synthetic drugs mm -hmm. and when you're off of the synthetic drugs now your body is supplemented and it can sustain itself in the natural way that's supposed to. Right. And the natural way that's supposed to is as one whole human system. We think of the, the body, uh, our, our bodies have an immune system. No, we are the immune system. Mm. It's not, we have an immune system, but we are the immune system. And it's all about mental hygiene, emotional hygiene, spiritual hygiene, and uh, did I say emotional? Biological. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you get all of those together in one whole system, uh, the body is really going to acclimate that to that. And I, I, I think a lot of marketers call it a holistic lifestyle. Sure. 
you know, that's really what that is where pharma and synthetics and opiates and benzos and SSRIs treat just the symptoms and it bypasses, it bypasses the mind, right? It's like the mind is not our brain. The mind is what is, you know, processing thoughts and emotions and all these other things, pharma, opiates and all that, it goes straight to the symptom. It's not helping the underlying Mm. uh, areas. So when I say it bypasses the uh, Michael uh, Michael Poland talks a lot about that in his book How to Change Your Mind. But um, for example, like psychedelics really get to the root of the traumas, and it kind of like that puzzle, right? That yeah, we put yeah. together in all our life, the stories. That's the puzzle. It breaks that open, and then you're like, oh, I see it from a different perspective. Yeah, pharma holds that perspective in place that we built up over time where we're continuously dependent on those medications because it's helping reinforce the story that we've told ourselves that if I get off this, I'm going to be uh, stricken with anxiety and depression. And that's a really sad state to be in when you can't, you can't enjoy the human experience for all mm-hmm. it's worth. Happiness, joy, sadness, you know, anger, all the emotions, and you're just dulled by these medications. So that's the, you know, a very roundabout back, back to the nature of addiction uh, that we want to make a dent on, you know, we want people to be able to be sovereign in their health, and their happiness, and not have to depend on, you know, uh, some large scale system telling them how to be happy and healthy by taking this pill every day. Mm-hmm. That does ma- that, that we're going to look back 50 years from now and be like, that makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> what the hell were you all thinking? Right. Right. What, like that makes zero sense. Yeah. You go to a doctor because you have stress and anxiety and the doctor says, take this pill. Right. Instead of saying, go out and walk in nature, turn your phone off, drink some water, change your diet around a mm. little bit, call mm. a friend, call a family member, take mm. a knitting class, you know, learn music, do, do these things that satiate yourself as a human. Like, I hope we look back in less than 50 years and be like, you all were numb nuts. <laughs> like, thank yeah. you, Tricombs Institute. Thank you, Medicine Box. Thank you. You know, all these other people doing the really good work to yeah. untangle that ball of yarn, you yeah. know, that has been in place for so long. So I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah, I wanted yeah. to throw Definitely. in some science, some spirituality, some philosophy into all of that. But because that's really what I, I, I believe is conscious capitalism, looking at problems and creating uh, conscious solutions around them. Yeah, and, and it's definitely about, like you said, addressing the root of the problem or the issue or whatever's going on as opposed to just putting it in a box mm. and putting it in a shelf in the back of your mind because yeah. that doesn't just that doesn't it's still there, right? Like it's it's still taking up that space. Yeah. Yeah, don't feel it. Don't, yeah. don't feel it. You don't need to feel it. Yeah, right. It's fine. And all they're going to do and when you put them in that box and put them on the shelf, they'll just fester on the shelf. They'll rot, they'll become toxic, and eventually they'll ooze out and drip all over the floor. The we guilt, that. the shame, the depression, mm-hmm. right? Then that's, and that nature of addiction. And a lot mm-hmm. of people don't even know they're addicted to th- people, places, things. And and mm-hmm. and that's an, another thing. It's like uh, back to everyone's recovering from something and – there's a lot of subtlety and nuances in addiction mm-hmm. and our society now more than ever is, is socially constructed to build addiction. I firmly believe that with social media, with this, the competitiveness for, you know, uh, self gratification and attention seeking on our media channels and, and keeping up with the Jones and this sense of urgency, my friend and I were talking about the other day. It's like, there's a sense of urgency to just like get shit done and change the world. 
I that feel that, man. Is, I feel yeah, that. we all feel it. And I yeah. love, I, you know, I'm 40. I'm at the cusp of like the millennial, zenial generation. Sure. But a lot of my millennial homies who I love so much, it, there's, they have this sense of urgency to get shit done and change yeah. the world and do it, do it, go, go, go. Mm-hmm. And that is a form of addiction. You don't see it, but that's a sure. form of addiction. And, uh, you know, and that's the awareness that we're trying to bring to people. And all my millennial homies out there, I love you all so much. You know who you are. Yeah. Hey, take a deep breath real quick. You know, take a deep breath, soak in the moment. You know, you can, you can, you can change the world after you take 10 seconds to, to, to take some deep breaths. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it's all about. (laughs) Doing, doing nothing is, is, is uh, just as important as doing something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, one more thing I want to ask you about before I let you go here. Thank you for, for taking this 50 minutes to, to sit down and Dude, talk to I, me. I love talking about this stuff, man. Right Just, on, man. Yeah. yeah, me too. Now, one more thing I want to ask you about is finding an anchor because you upload mm-hmm. videos to your IGTV uh, that explore wellness topics from uh, Medicine Boxes blog. Mm-hmm. And your most recent upload you spoke about what you uh, you spoke about living in what you call the age of anxiety, which is something you brought up earlier in our conversation too. And you said that um, it's important to understand and to remember that death and taxes aren't the only certain things in life, <laughs> and it's important to find an anchor. So, what's your anchor? What keeps you grounded? Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, what keeps me grounded is my my routines and rituals. Uh, I utilize my time wisely for myself. I turn my phone, it starts with turning my phone off at night on airplane mode and keeping it off from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So sunrise to mid morning for me, I don't reach for my phone the first thing in the morning. Think of what you do when you reach for your phone first thing in the morning before you've even got out of bed. You are looking at Instagram, Facebook, Hmm. every other media channel. What's Trump doing? Mm -hmm. What's the cabal doing? What's QAnon up to? Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a little little jab to all the conspiracy theorist folks. (laughs) And you're getting – what are you creating? Anxiety. You haven't given any time for yourself. Okay, so I get up, no phone. I make my bed. I brush my teeth. I take my supplements. I go upstairs. I do my qigong practice into my nice. yoga flow, nice. into a non-negotiable sit down, shut the fuck up, and listen. Twenty-minute meditation. Terrence McKenna said, "Sit down, shut up, and listen." I like to say, "Shut the fuck up, and listen." It's just mm-hmm. like, dude, sit down, take that time, do it. I get up from my meditation. I make my bulletproof coffee while the bulletproof coffee is resting in its French press. I sit, I write gratitude. One thing I'm great, grateful for that morning, I read my daily reflections, 12 step book. I read from the Tao of Power. Um, I have my uh, Be Here Now by Ram Das nice. and my Mindful Morning uh, book that I read a passage from. And then uh, if I have some writing to do, you know, that what you just said to me about, you know, um, what you just read off to me, that's some writing that Justin and I do together. Mm-hmm. And that's always uh, nice to be grounded because writing is just, uh, you know, coming from source and coming from you as a stream of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't have writing, I'll sit down and uh, put my timer on and I'll read for 30 minutes uh, out of a book that I'm, you know, educating myself on. It's, and right now I'm reading Entangled by Merlin Sheldrake. It's about, uh, fungi and it's an amazing amazing book this guy's like a real life like hobbit um nice i'm having (laughs) such a fun time reading uh this book and if i can sneak in a little bit of uh guitar playing just running some you know scales Mm. uh you know i'm pretty grounded right there once that phone goes on at 10 a.m rj it's all over (laughs) <laughs> like I have yeah. no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen, <laughs> even though I have a Google Calendar. No freaking clue. Yeah. But, but to to package all of that up, that's what I found that works for me, and it took me three, four years to do it. So the sense of urgency to figure something out like that for yourself, it, it's all about what 
makes you happy and what makes you whole. And, um, those are the things I like to translate to others when I, I work with them one-on-one, -on -one. Mm. but, um, you know, if anything, if I could pick anything out of that, t turn your damn phone off at night and don't yeah. turn it on the first thing in the morning, give yourself, I understand people may have more demanding jobs and kids and, and relationships to tend to, but give yourself some time in the morning to jump into yourself and your world before you jump into everybody else's. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. And because once you're jumping into everyone else's, wh where are you? You're in everyone else's world. You're tangled yeah. up in drama. You're tangled up, tangled up in their anxiety. You're mm -hmm. tangled up in solving problems. You're tangled up in figuring out what you're going to have for dinner. And, and you're, you're doing what? Taking yourself away from the present moment. Exactly. Yeah, man. Got to keep those vibrations high, right? Absolutely. <laughs> totally. Well, thanks, man, for taking the time to have this conversation with me. Um, it was very enlightening, and I love the work that you're doing, and I love that you were able to take this harrowing experience that you went through and turn it into uh, growth and, and, and turn it into this, this flourishing uh, business and this business philosophy that you have now. Um, before we go here, where can our listeners find Medicine Box and where can our listeners find what you're doing uh, whenever your phone turns on at 10 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my personal Instagram is underscore uh, Brian Chapel, and I post a lot of like just funny, weird stuff on there and my life in Tahoe and beyond. Uh, Medicine Box Instagram is medicine underscore box medicinebox.green website uh, and soon medicineboxwellness.com is the e-commerce site I'm mm -hmm. also on LinkedIn very active on LinkedIn um, so anyone out there in the business world wants to get a hold of me uh, Brian Chaplin and uh, that's that's it and I'm in North Lake Tahoe and I always like to say this anyone that makes it to North Lake Tahoe uh, I don't care if you're a stranger or not. Look me up, find me, shoot me a DM. Um, and I will make some time in my schedule to have coffee with you or show you around at, at some of the local spots, whether it's on the lake or on a ski trail at Squaw Valley or um, on a mountaintop somewhere. So that's my that's my ode to everyone else there. And I've, a lot of people have taken me up on that. So I dig that, man. You might yeah. hear from me soon then. If that's the yeah, please, please do. Yeah. Cool. Well, Brian, thanks again, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you stay safe over there. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks so much, RJ. Tell everyone at the crew at Tricombs uh, many blessings for this experience. Appreciate it. My thanks again to Brian Chaplin for joining me. If you are a member of the cannabis community and have a story you want to share with us, we would love to hear from you. You can reach the show at hashitout at tricombs.com. You can help others find the show by taking a moment to subscribe to the podcast and write a review. You can also join the discussion with industry insiders and get your voice heard by joining the community at trichomes.com and following us on all social media. Hash It Out is produced by David Fortin and presented by trichomes.com. I'm RJ Balde. Thanks for listening. <laughs>